I think people are getting stuck, like obviously the cold outreach, the cold DMs, like, you know, they're forcing so much outbound that if they just harnessed a little bit of that effort and started making content, it's gonna flip to inbound, mm -hmm. you know, and you don't need a lot of followers for this to happen. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of The Report Saturday edition. And I got my co-host today, my man, Ryan McGinn. How you doing, Ryan? Pretty good, man. Glad to, ha glad to be here. Yeah, 100%, man. So uh, for today's topic, dude, I really want to go deep on how to organically grow your social media audience and your personal brand quickly, but organically starting from zero. So I want to go deep on this. This is something that I've done over the last couple of years. Um, starting from zero, basically, you've done this very successfully on multiple platforms. You help a lot of different clients, uh, some big name clients and some newer clients do this uh, at a much higher level than I'm even doing it at. And so you got a lot of experience in that said. So I want to jump into the best techniques. So right now, the algorithms are changing. Uh, we got all these different platforms out there. We got TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Threads, YouTube, and then you got the podcast platforms are the major ones. Um, right now, which platform do you feel, or maybe two or three platforms do you feel should be the bread and butter for everyone? Well, I mean, I would say for quick reach and exposure right now, nothing's going to be TikTok in my opinion, but you need all of them. Let's be, let's be real. If you're making videos for any of the platforms, especially short videos, they can just go on TikTok, Instagram reels and YouTube shorts and Facebook reels. So, you, so it's like, we're at the cross section of like the only time in, in you history. might as well be on all four of those. Yeah, you yes. know, it's the same video going to all four. You know, but if I had to like put together a plan, like I would focus the videos to do well on TikTok, just because I, in my experience, I found that if they do well there, they do well everywhere else. And then also some videos that don't do well on TikTok seem to do better on Instagram or YouTube. So it's like, you can kind of hit all the bases, but like, as far as content, you got to kind of set a cadence. I would immediately start trying to do one video a day. So now you need 30 videos a month. If the goal is solely growth, and I would encourage somebody, if you're trying to do this, to put off the maybe making money from this for maybe, you know, I would push it as long as you can. I didn't sell on my Instagram for like two and a half years. And then when I did, I made a hundred grand in like three days. So like you will be reimbursed for your efforts. Mm -hmm. I promise. Delay gratification. Yeah. But I also understand that people need to make money. Like, and I don't want to shut that down. I would say the types of content that I have found, it's exactly what I do that get reach and get reach fast is the, the man on the street style interviews. Find people, whether it be locally or you're traveling to them and ask them questions about their expertise, but do it from the framing of what does this person know and how can I get a lot of views for this person? Because ultimately when somebody that I interview, and if you look at my account, you see hundreds of them. When I ask people questions, the goal is not to get me views. The goal is to get them views, but I know by getting them views, I'm going to get views. So I need to frame this person good. I need to ask them questions that are, you know, going to extract some value and, and you know, kind of maybe shock the audience. So I would focus, you're doing 30 videos, you need one video a day. I would say like 15 of those, just find people to talk to. Because that's also going to get your feet wet of asking good questions. And like, also, you, most likely, that's going to grow your Instagram faster because they're going to collab with all the videos that you make. Mm. And the Instagram collab feature is quite frankly, one of the only ways that I know to grow really fast on Instagram, because if me and you collab on a reel, your followers see it, my followers see it, boom, way right. more views. Yeah. It's mutual, so, but mutually beneficial. Yeah. It's mutually beneficial. So, you know, when you're doing these, like, you know, and don't stress them being big on social media, just go for people that you find interesting or other people in your industry or like, you know, whatever that you want to talk to somebody about and then start getting those out. Try to get 15 a month. Then they have 15 left. I would encourage you to get used to filming parts of your day. By, you know, if you want to look at my account, the day in the life videos, they're very popular. I'm doing most of it from this camera, which cost me like 600 bucks or my phone. And then I edit them together. You don't need the camera. You can do it all from your phone in an app called CapCut. Very easy. And you're just taking clips of your day. And then at the end, you're just narrating over what you did that day. Dude, I had Thatch Ginn on uh, from Seattle. He's got like... Uh, millions. Over, he's got, yeah, millions yeah, of followers awesome. between YouTube and, and Instagram, all that sort of stuff. And this guy came over, didn't speak a lick of English, came over with his family from Vietnam like 30 years ago and was basically like uh, in a freaking camp, P Camp Pendleton. And they had no money, didn't speak English. And literally he, he started buying real estate. But this guy doesn't, still doesn't speak the best English. And he's like not a hot chick. And he's able to grow his account. And you know, he told me, he goes, dude, I just use a freaking iPhone and that's it. 
literally just an iPhone and they edit everything in the Instagram app. And so, you know, the idea that you need all this crazy technology to grow, it's not freaking true. No, you don't. And most of like, when I say do the interviews with people, we use a phone and, and a good, and a wireless mic where I, I just yeah. hold it and go back. I mean, it does make a difference. Yeah. If, you if need you, the mic. Yeah. I'll, the, I'll spend the, the audio quality has got to be good. 300 bucks on a mic. And we use the phone because it's less intimidating. When you see a camera, people get like a big rig and yeah, lights they, and all that. They get yeah, all weirded out. But like I would, I would force yourself to start doing that and filming parts of your day because you're also going to be able to use that B-roll later for other videos that you have. So you're going to build like a database of B-roll and it, you know, they're on a scale of like easy to hard. They're like more easy than they are hard. Like once you figure it out and there's probably videos on how to do a day in a life on CapCut on YouTube, you can probably figure this out pretty quickly. I would do as many of those as you can. Like I would try to do maybe three a week. You know, that's going to give you three, six, nine, 12 videos there, you know, and then you have 15 interviews going out. And then I would do as many things as you can, just utilizing your phone, the green screen in TikTok. The green screen so good. The green screen's so good. Those videos crush. Yeah, the and, stitches and, and, crush. And real, and real quick, the green screen. I think that is probably one of the best ways to grow and get a lot of shares. I always approach my content as like, how can I potentially get the most amount of shares? How are people going to share this content with their friends? Share it on a story, and that's how a lot of new people are going to find you. But secondly, when your piece gets a lot of shares, the algorithms now think, oh, this is a great piece of content everyone's sharing it, we're gonna start shoving this out into more and more users. And that's how new people follow you, that's how you get new followers. But the green screen is one of the best ways to do it. All you gotta do is find like a new trending topic or a hot piece of news that comes out. Like for example, last weekend, Donald Trump got fired, shot at, uh, at, at one of those conferences. Like that's a freaking trending, trending piece of content. You go snapshot the news article, do a green screen, put your 30 second spin on it, and boom, I promise you those things will get a ton of shares. I mean, those news publishers, their job is to get clicks. And so all those headlines, you just screenshot it and put your little spin on it. Uh, the Federal Reserve came out last week and they said, hey, we're gonna potentially do eight consecutive rate cuts starting in September. That's big news, that's new. That's big headlines. Do a green screen and put your little spin on that and ask the audience, hey, let me know in the comments, what are your thoughts on the interest rates? Where are they gonna go? And I promise you, you're gonna get a lot of engagement, you're gonna get a lot of shares and new people can follow you. So that's one tip that I have. Yeah, I, I mean, and, and but with all that, I mean, now you're at your 30, 30 minimum and you're probably even closer to like 40 to 50 if like the green screens go fast and if you're like constantly up on that like they you can crush those and then like the the whole point of starting is like you want to start getting in you know we call it like you want to start getting into the routine of making videos like it's a routine now it needs to be part of your life like and these will force you to get a routine and doing it and you don't need like at this stage if you're just doing this like don't hire an editor yet no, like, this learn is how to do it yourself. Like, you've and got it's not it. that hard. It's not hard. Like CapCut is incredible. I still run my whole Instagram myself. All the DMs, the captions, like trim things. Like I still run the whole thing myself. And yes, I have a content team. They're badass and they they do a lot of the videos and all that sort of thing. But as far as, far as like managing, I do that all myself right now. Yeah, I, th I think, I mean, I'm editing my own day in the life. Like the, I'm doing most of my content myself too. Like You need to know what to do and then you can then you can outsource it and bring somebody in. And I would bring somebody in when you've established that you can do like a video a day and you're gonna have to do it in batches, you know, like film this shit in batches. Like when you do an interview, just for context, like if I interview one person, you talk to them for like 30 minutes, you get like 10 to 12 videos. Like it's a good use of time. It is. Yeah. Like, and then you're, and you film it. And this is where like, if you get good. You know, and I say you get good by experience. Like you come in, you're like, okay, this is what I want to ask this person. And you ask those questions. Then you try not to go too sidetracked because then the files get really long. But it's like, all you need for that to work is somebody to hold a phone or a camera at you. Like you can get that for a hundred dollars an hour in any local area. A videographer will come hold a camera for you. Like, and then they'll just give you the memory card. Yeah. Very simple to do. And, and if you're listening to this and you're like wondering like, why, why go through all this work and the headaches? Let me just say something. So I was doing some pretty cool stuff in the real estate space before I started putting out content. And two years ago, exactly, is when I started really taking the content game seriously. And once I started prioritizing the content as the main hustle and everything else as a secondary hustle, everything became easier. More deals for the real estate, ability to raise private capital to buy more deals, ability to network with higher caliber people, ability to hire and retain better quality team members. Like all that stuff has completely changed. We just brought a new team member to Trinity. Trinity found me on TikTok and now she's on the team. And so none of this would have happened without 
um, me prioritizing the content as a main hustle. So if you feel like you're late to the game, I'm telling you right now, you are early to the game in the grand scheme of things. Everything is continuing to go away from the TV screens, away from the news stations, and into social media, into the cell phone, into podcasts like this. And um, I got to say, like, 95% of all the capital that we're bringing in for these real estate deals, all the money, the revenue streams that we're making is all coming from content and the podcast. Yeah, you want people, like, and this is where, like, I work a lot of people with agencies and short-form content agencies follow me, and it's part of, like, and they're always like, Brian, how do you get clients? How do you get clients? It's like, I don't have to get clients. Like, everything for me is inbound. Like, I don't have to sell. Yeah. It's literally... Hey, I've heard you work with so-and-so. How does this work? I see what you do. How does it work? Like, what's it cost? Like, on nine times out of 10, they already know the cost. Because the trust has already been built. They've been watching videos. They've been listening to the podcast. And so by the time they actually hop on the call, it's like not a question of like, hey, do I trust you? It's a, it's a matter of like, hey, what does this cost? What's your offer? Yeah. All right, I'm ready to move yeah, forward. Yeah, what does it look like to work together? Like, yeah. and, and I think people are getting stuck. Like, obviously, the cold outreach, the cold DMs, like, you know, they, they're forcing so much outbound that if they just harnessed a little bit of that effort and started, you know, making content, it's going to flip to inbound, mm -hmm. you know, and you don't need a lot of followers for this to happen. Yeah. I always say like, if, if you're not making the kind of money you want to be making, or if you're in real estate and you're not buying the type of real estate deals that you want to be buying, it's simply because you're not shaking enough hands. But ultimately, you know, there's two ways to solve that. You can go reach out to the network and go to these conferences and you can go to these meetups and networking events and you can go meet people one handshake at a time. Or you can build something cool and watch the network come to you. And so something cool might be a podcast. You build a meetup or you start putting out content on social media and watch the leads come to you. And these are warm leads. But that said, what are some awesome other ways to, to go viral? I think one thing that's working really well for me right now is Twitter posts. Um, so it, it will take me five minutes to come up with a Twitter post. I will screenshot it from Twitter. I'll copy and paste it to threads. And then I'll put it out as an Instagram reel. And I think that I like doing these in the morning because people in the morning, especially on weekdays, are more likely to be driving to work or driving to the gym, and they don't want to watch a 45-second video. They'd rather wa or read, a f you know, they can read faster than they can watch. And so they're more likely to uh, share a Twitter post to their story. Also, they're a lot more shareable. And so I've found that Twitter posts for me right now are actually uh, getting a bigger reach, especially when I do it in the morning. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. They, they, there's just another way to get it. Like an essential video out there, but it's like, how long do you make yours? Six seconds? Uh, just four seconds is four what's seconds, standard. And seconds. so the watch time will go up because if it's good, the average watch time might be seven seconds on a four second video. Yeah, I, I would be curious if you tried a one second video. Mm -mm. I would try that. I don't know. Yeah, they're, they're like popular right now. Um, Interesting. But as far as like most people, they struggle with topics like, and the specifically TikTok and even Reels, like there's certain topics that if you just talk about, I can guarantee you're gonna get a lot more views. And there's, there, there's like three that seem to hit every time. It's car videos. Like if you can do videos. Nice cars, nice, exotic cars. Nice cars, exotic cars. I, I don't know, like I haven't even tested regular cars yet. Like, why do you own a Toyota Camry? Like, you're, how much does Toyota Camry cost? Like, I, I haven't tested that yet, but I should. I'm, I'm, I might do that. Um, but car videos as a whole, and you can look at my page for proof of this. Like, just look at the views on anything with a car in it. Mm -hmm. Significantly, if not always, viral. Boats. Cars, boats planes private jets yeah i mean but even like owning a plane like a small plane if you have a friend like i have a friend that owns a small plane i should interview about his plane and then the secondary would be like parenting advice mm. if you're a homeschooling your kids yep. why Anything, the public school system public is not ideal parenting advice yeah. like your values and beliefs as a parent taxes people love how people to save love money on taxes. taxes people love taxes yeah. also um relationship advice things that you do with your girlfriend or, or wife and it, you know those videos are evergreen too mm -hmm. so if you get you know, some of those to hit, they will get views forever. Um, financial mistakes do very, very well. I have a video that always goes viral that when I just talk about a horrible financial mistake of mine of, that was a for lightning, you know, like, like be vulnerable on those, but share those like, and then just full on transparency of something like, and that could be, you know, <clears throat> here's what it looks like to make a hundred thousand dollars a month running a short form content agency and then like break down the numbers and everything as much as you're comfortable doing it. I know that that is pushing the boundaries, but people love numbers. They love statistics. They love breakdowns and they, they, um, and Louise kind of coined this, um, we're in like a reveal culture era right now mm -hmm. where it's like, reveal to me how you do this. Mm. Like, I don't want you to tell me what to do. I just want you to reveal exactly how, how you, you did, did it, it or walk me through you doing it again, mm -hmm. like, or doing it like, like in, that. in public. All those are more advanced as to like the greens, like 
you know, but you have to get good at this and it, and it's, you know, the better you get at it, the quicker the videos get to make. And that's the thing, like you probably don't stress about making videos. Like it, it becomes a routine and it's just like going to the gym. And I think that that's, I would say, you know, we have a, you know, kind of a phrase is, um, I'm stealing it from my friend Adley who gets billions of views. And she's like, you need to make a hundred shitty videos. Like, go make 100 shitty videos, and I promise by the time 101 is not going to be shitty. I agree. And I, w I also feel like it gets easier as you grow. So, like, those first 100 videos are first, I would say, like, just post every day. Commit to posting every day for 90 days, and it's going to feel uncomfortable, but everyone starts from zero. Like, when I started posting, I lost followers for the first 30 days because a lot of the initial people that follow you uh, are people that followed you from high school, their friends and family from back home, their old coworkers. And they don't want to see your new content. They don't care about real estate investing or whatever it is that you're putting out there. And so you're naturally just going to lose followers before you start gaining new followers for people that are into whatever you're putting out there. So that can be discouraging. Just know it's part of the game. But I say commit to 90 days because after 90 days, you're going to have 90 pieces of content to go back to and see what did well. Okay, let's double down on the pieces that did well. Let's remake them and let's remix them. And then the pieces that didn't do well, let's just scrap them. Right. And now you have real time data to make you better for the next 90 days. And that's what you uh, and, and you touched on a really good point. Um, looking at the videos and how they do actually make sure you set your account up to where you have analytics. Um, we've we've done this many times. It's a mistake everybody makes where you forget to turn the analytics on. I do it on all your platforms to immediately before you post your first video. That way you can do exactly what you said. If you're posting night, if you post 90 videos and none of them did great. You will go back and look and see that some of them might have gotten a thousand views, whereas others got a hundred. One might have got 10K. Go look at those videos that did well. Where did the where did the viewers drop off? What did you say? What was the video about? How long was the video? You want to like categorize and look at your videos from a data perspective. And then you just roll that in to making more that are similar, if not the same, as that. And that's the thing too. You don't constantly have to come up with new stuff. You can just reinvent what you've already said multiple times in different ways. And repost the old content. So like when you have something that pops off from five months ago, six months ago, recycle that content, repost it because it will pop off again. But also like all your new followers between the last time you posted it and now, they didn't get a chance to see it. And so um, I'm finding that when I repost old content that did well back in the day, um, it's actually popping off more now because there's a lot of new followers that haven't seen it. Um, so that's another one right there. And if you're listening to this right now and you're like, dude, I am a business owner or I'm, you know, I have some sort of business entrepreneur, maybe you're a real estate agent and you're like, hey, I know I should be putting out content, but I'm not. I just rolled out a new opportunity, a really sick opportunity called the Seven Figure Creator. Uh, we got about 40 members in it right now, all badasses in their perspective spaces, all content creators, uh, people that are pushing out content and growing, how to build your personal brand organically, how to grow on social media, how to start your own podcast and ultimately monetize that to get more leads for your business, create your own online community, get sponsorships like Bill. Uh, set up affiliate marketing, passive income, all that sort of thing. Um, really cool group that we got going on. You can go to the sevenfigurecreator.com to book a free call with our team. Again, that's the sevenfigurecreator.com to book a free call. So another thing, Ryan, uh, that I like to allude to, it, when I when I focus, when I put out a new piece of content, the two things that I am most concerned with are, is this going to relate to a high percentage of my audience? And, and then number two, is this going to be interesting enough for someone to want to share on their story or share with a friend? Those are the most two important things that I'm thinking about. Because let me just give you an example. I invest in boutique hotels. If I put out a piece of content on Instagram about how I raise private capital to buy a boutique hotel, that is going to relate to about 2% of my audience. That video is never going to go viral, right? And uh, But on the flip side, if I do a video on why I decided to stop drinking and some of the techniques and takeaways that I've learned over the last 60 days and not drinking, that's going to relate to a lot more people. And so that has a better chance of going viral than raising private capital for hotels. And so the biggest mistake that I see people doing out there is I see them, uh, you know, if they're like, oh, this is my niche, it's, you know, let's just say their niche is investing in the stock market. And then, oh no, let's just say selling life insurance. And they just go all in on selling life insurance sales or videos. They're never going to grow because no one's going to really want to run away to that other than the people that are like looking to grow their life insurance agency. And that's a very, very small niche. So if you're looking for leads for your life insurance agency, you should be going wide with your content, trying to grow the audience as big as possible. And then, oh, by the way, I have a life insurance agency. Everyone's going to know that you sell life insurance. You don't need to talk about it a whole lot. Yeah, the, the less you talk about your profession, I find that the more successful you end up being with content at your profession. Yes. Um, you want people actively searching you out. How do you make money? What do you do? Like, and that's kind of a, 
And that's where like pin posts come into play. You just make one pin post that says, "This is hey, my name is Rich Summers. This is how I make my money." Mm -hmm. Like, and it's yes. just there. One and, pin post right there at yep, top of your profile. And then you don't have to talk about it anymore because trust me, people if they, they like you, they will search you out. Like, yeah. and and they will want to know more about you. And it's a lot easier to sell that way. Like when they're reaching out to you, the dynamic is shifted. You know, you're not interrupting them. You're not like, hey, man, I got something for you. Yeah. Some of the biggest names I know, um, if you look at their social media or their podcast, they're not selling anything. You know, the best salespeople, you don't even know that they're selling. Yep. Yeah. So provide value. And I think that's how I approach a lot of my content is like, how can I provide value for the audience? It's never for me. If I'm posting something that's about me, I won't post it. That's no, usually my biggest question. Yeah, it's it's it, it's it's a dynamic shift because you got to self promote, but you got to do it in a way that doesn't piss everybody off. Yeah. What what is your number one piece of advice for someone that's brand new? They know they should be putting out content, and they're like, okay, I'm about, I'm about to start this. I would start with what do people ask you for advice about? What like if somebody comes up to you, they say, Brian, I need help with this. What is that? How many videos around that can you make? That might not be what you get paid to do right now. And then also understand that you're. Your hobbies and your interests are probably gonna be the videos that you're gonna be most passionate about and they're gonna get you the most reach. But the easiest videos to film are gonna be what you get paid to do, what is like your true mastery expertise. Yes. You need more of the, the hobbies and interests than you do with the mastery. If you flipped your mindset of like, I'm gonna make less videos about my thing, but I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna make more videos about what I'm interested in, you will grow much faster. And also the content's gonna be more engaging and more entertaining and more interesting because these are topics that you're actually into learning more about. Like when I bring on podcast guests that are like doctors and they're doing like badass shit of spaces that I'm not even like, I don't even know of, I'm more into these conversations. And so I think the content just organically is better versus just talking boutique hotel investing and hammering that home over and over and over. I promise you after a hundred episodes of talking, uh, whatever your niche is, you're gonna start to get bored. If you're getting bored, your audience is gonna get bored. 100%. Yeah. And then lastly, I think just to tie it in, I think um, don't be afraid to be different. Be a little bit like, ha have your thing. Like everyone has their own thing. Like Ryan Pineda's got the dyed hair. You know, uh, Alex ramosi has got the Crocs and the wife beater. Like <laughs> have your thing, be brandable, be recognizable. And like when I first got into real estate investing, I thought I had to put a suit on. I thought I had to cover the tattoos. I thought I couldn't wear a hat. And what I realized is actually like the more authentic you are, to who, who you are, the more people are actually gonna trust you. And so I'm digging into it now. Now I'm just like, whatever. I get up on stage, I just cuss, I don't care. Like, I just, I'm me. And people like that, they trust you more. Yeah, turn the volume up on yourself. There you go. Whatever when is you, just turn it up to like eight. Yeah, I like that. When the lights come on, reinvent yourself, take it to a new level, and I promise you good things will happen. But all in all, I would say, if you feel like you're late to the content game, this is just getting warmed up right now. Get in it make yourself do it it's going to feel uncomfortable it's going to be tough you're not going to grow up first but i promise you if you can stick to it for nine months 12 months 18 months i promise you, you'll look back and you'll see the growth and it's going to create a lot of more leads for your business it's going to change a lot of different things for your life that you didn't even think were possible so anyways i think that concludes this edition of the saturday edition he's ryan mcginn i'm rich summers listeners thanks for doing it. we'll see you in the next one peace